the goal for this session in my mind is I love the concept of how do you even make a worship set work um, and I'm I call it the nuts and bolts of worship set preparation because I mean you're reading some really great spiritual stuff here but we need to talk about some nuts and bolts too I mean we need to really talk about the base how in the world do I put these six songs together or these four songs together and make it actually work right and so my goal isn't really to be spiritual today. Don't think that it's not spiritual in my head. I mean, I prayed about this, you know, each week as I turn out a set, I'm working with God about and what to do. But my goal here today is give you real tools. I want to give you a hammer, I want to give you a screwdriver, and I want you to be able to take it back and use it. And so my goal is to go fast and cover a ton, a ton of ground. So that's where we're at. Um, so let's, let's do it. Um, okay, so let's start. First thing, um, I gave you a little graph. I got really excited. I, I did the what happens during worship in paint, and I felt cool about it. Uh, my friend, who's a graphic artist, probably laughed at me. Uh, but I think it's really important before we're going to craft a set, let's just step back for a moment, you know, go way up the, the big overview, and say, all right, how, what are we even doing here? What is our actual goal we're trying to accomplish? And even as I was working through this in my head, that's I was like, okay, how do I even you know, explain this in an actual, you know, boiled down scenario. So that's how I have the God initiates with the gospel, we respond in faith, and then God ministers. But I want to for a moment think of what we're actually doing. My, my, um, we've been working with our uh, head pastor really talking about how are we actually um, engaging the gospel in worship. And he has a great session going on right now about gospel centered worship. Um, but in my mind, I think through what the gospel is happening. Let's, let's not think about worship music for a moment. Let's think about um, the transformation that happens when we come to Christ. You know, God actually has done the work ahead of time. So he initiated Jesus coming to earth, the death on the cross. He initiated, you know, grace in our lives, of even giving us the ability to engage him, to even think about it, or prevenient grace, as I will say. Uh, so he initiates that. And then we do respond I think there's, that's legitimate. Uh, not that there's any work of our own that we should boast, but there still is a response as, or a facet to it. Uh, so even in worship, their congregation isn't just listening to words. They are then responding to it. And so uh, that's the next one. And then also, I think then in the midst, and I think maybe if we miss anything, it's this, then God then ministers back to us. Uh, similar to, you know, God uh, bringing the salvation message to us, us responding to it. He then seals us with the Holy Spirit and he finishes the work, and then he gives us a new spirit. He makes us a new creation. He does kind of bookend the whole process. So in my mind, I think, great, let's do that in the worship set. Let's actually communicate that same imprint or that blueprint into the set. Uh, and so that's the idea of God initiating, us responding, and then allowing God to minister. And the, there's a little bowl there of, the, isn't the context though of community. This isn't a personal worship set. This isn't a you know personal time in your car or in a park. This is everybody. We're trying to attempt this together, which I think is a different beast in its own right. It's not a small group. Uh, it's a corporate setting, you know. Uh, so let's talk about that. How does God initiate? Uh, one thing, one phrase I do like a lot is that worship is a response or a byproduct. Uh, some of the fruits of the Spirit are, I don't want to quote them all, but, uh, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, some of those things. Um, <laughs> and so I think similarly, worship is the byproduct of seeing God, kind of what he's been talking about with Isaiah. Isaiah, what we're talking about him doing, he, his are all responses to what he has seen. Uh, and so I think it's really important to remember, you know, uh, if you want your congregation to be energetic or move or all that, those things are responses. You can't actually manufacture that. That's a byproduct. And the product is the gospel message. And so I don't want to, if I'm on stage and I'm like, come on, we got to, we got to sing louder, sing stronger. That's trying to manufacture a byproduct. I don't want to manufacture. You can't actually do it. You will fail at it. And so what I want to do is actually communicate the gospel in a way that causes the byproduct to come out or causes the response. And so if there is a word I wanted to come off of, worship's a byproduct. And so if you're not pumping the product, you're not going to get it. Or if you get it, you're going to get a vain byproduct that isn't legitimate. And so you got to start there. So let's... Some ideas on how God initiates. One is the power of the gospel, uh, what the gospel message actually is. It, it's for Christians and non-Christians. Uh, that's been something that's been really important lately. We're not just sharing the gospel message at the end for an altar call and salvation. We're sharing it at the beginning so we can reset God initiating. 
So in the, in the initial um, psalms, let's recognize God's character. Let's um, renew or refocus our minds on Christ's work. I like that at the beginning because it works then within the model of God initiating, or even in the gospel message to us, God initiating that to us. And so let's do that in the set. Um, uh, so a lot of that, in my mind, is God's character, what he's done, those types of things. More maybe educational, although um, energetic. Um, and then we respond. So the, the goal also in worship leading is creating a space for, I think, a personal encounter with God. I mean, I like knowledge. I like learning about God. But, you know, sometimes there's nothing like a hug. You can tell me you love me, but if you hug me, I get it. You know, and so I don't think it's wrong. You want to balance, but I don't think it's wrong to attempt to create then a space for people to have an encounter with the living God. Um, and so within that encounter, um, engaging in right submission, engaging in confession, engaging in repentance, uh, those are things that you want the congregation to be able to do. That's, that's how we respond. You know, if you look at Isaiah... You know, well, I'm a man of unclean lips. You know, I'm undone. That's kind of a confession of repentance kind of scenario. It looks similar to it. Um, and, you know, and then also being in the right position. You know, sometimes there's images of people falling on their face. And so the idea is we present the gospel, maybe an initial song or two, or even through words of the game. It doesn't have to be a song. Maybe it's within your intro. Hey, welcome to, welcome to New Life this morning. We're so glad you're here. Uh, you can even talk about if you want to do it. You can present the Gospels to a degree there of God's character uh, and help bring them the corporate body under submission to who God is in the Gospel message. Um, and so that then begins a proper response, not just a excited manufactured response. Um, and then God ministering, um, I like this on the back end of the set, of uh, where there's actually healing, uh, there's spiritual warfare that can be done of you know fighting against evil forces, so to speak. Um, greater faith or deeper conviction. Uh, you know, the, the song at the end, uh, it hits home. You're like, oh, wow, and those words grip me. And it's through that that I have maybe a deeper understanding or there's clarity of some spiritual point. Um, also, you know, uh, strength uh, from having heard the gospel message, responding, and then God then can minister in time. We have prayer parties at the end of ours where prayer people will be at the front they can go to. Um, I love longer sets at the end uh, because I think it allows more time uh, for ministering. Uh, in my mind, um, you know, we, we do in general six songs. Uh, and I was, I was just talking to my uh, head pastor lately. In college, we went with four up front, two at the end. There's no right way of doing it, but uh, we did four and two. And then the next year I left, we did three and three. And the last year we did two up front and four at the end. Because in my mind, I love the ministering time at the end. And I, don't, and I think that's a lot of personal encounter comes there. Uh, and so let's say it's not six songs, let's say you get four songs. I would love a one and three, actually. Uh, or if you have five, I'd prefer a two and three. Or a one and four. You know, if you only give me three songs, I'll take a one and a two. You know, up front one. I always prefer that because in my mind, um, uh, what I found best to create room for the Holy Spirit to move and, him, and actually have God minister to people. You know, I can only do so much in a song. I mean, let's say you have a great hymn or some great song about the character of who God is. Yeah, I mean, that does start to refocus them. They then engage with the, the gospel message. But then, you know, they need to hear some preaching. They need to get deep into the Word, in, in my thoughts. Let's get the preacher on the scene to really then illuminate of what the message is on the day. And then let's go for the real strong response, you know, the, a heavy response or reflection on the first song coming off the message. And then God can then really minister in those moments. We, you have a free 20 minutes. This is great. You know, and I, I think the congregation, you have a free 20 minutes where you're responding and God is ministering back to you in this time. And so, uh, those are my thoughts on that. Um, I do think it's interesting to think through, uh, as you're leading, how to work within the context of community. Uh, I think church, the, just the normal Sunday morning church, is literally the hardest worship set to create. I find it to be daunting. You have every uh, economic status, you have every age, you have every musical style in your congregation, and Tomlin doesn't match every one of them, you know, although I love Tomlin. You know, it's really hard to match everything that people are looking for and create a cohesive set. Uh, so I do think it's important to really wrestle with it. I think that it takes a lot of time to wrestle and, and learn the style of the congregation. And, and even for, like, I have a style. I have my own preferences that I would like to do. Uh, and I maybe only do them 30% of the time, you know, the way I really want to do it. You know, I, 
I'm much more of a, um, a heavier contemporary modern worship flavor with heavy electric. I like that a lot. Um, but that doesn't make sense all the time. It doesn't make sense a lot of the time, actually. And I'm on a sunny morning at 9 a.m. Uh, and so learning, you know, how to work my style in with everyone else's and learn, learn what the community's needs are with it. So, um, the best teaser I have on here is five questions to ask in any situation. Uh, I'll just note them here. The question is, you know, should, like, you have a basic question, should I do this song here? I don't know. Should I um, talk here? Should I close out with a prayer here? Um, gosh, it feels like running long. Should I double up the chorus or not? Right? I mean, these are just kind of questions either on the fly or in, que or in preparation you're going to be going with. And so I was like, what are the questions you can actually use on any scenario? And so, so here's what they are. One, will this cultivate or diminish personal worship in the members of the body? Uh, we're people first, we are then corporate second. That doesn't mean that personal is better. It's just that's the order. You know, I'm always thinking about myself. You know, I can't be a really good corporate member until I personally am <laughs> focusing on Jesus and then ready to be a part of the corporate. And so, is this going to hinder or hurt the personal worship in the body? And then similarly, too, will this facilitate or obstruct corporate worship in the body? You know, a great question is, or a great one this, to answer this question would be, on the electric guitar solo, how long should it be? You know, honestly, all the time I'm thinking, where is that in the set? And how long is the right length for it not to obstruct corporate worship? Honestly, that, that's the great question for that, that one. You know, is, is, should it go 16 bars or should it only be 8? You know, should it be distortion and, and wild and out or should it really be demure and subtle? Because that will facilitate the corporate environment. Um, another one is, does this help or hinder the focus on Jesus? Again, back to product versus byproduct. Um, like this could be good even as a worship leader. Should I come off melody here because I want to and it's fun, but that's going to obscure Jesus? Because they're going to suddenly think, boy, that guy's got a great voice. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. That was good. Those aren't really the goals. Your goals are focusing on Jesus. And so that's a good question in terms of, you know, some things like that. Or drums, how should they play in here? What, you know, sometimes it's really funny. My drums get annoyed. We'll play a song after, as a post-message worship song. And it's going to be prayer time, right? And I'm like, guess what? You don't even play until so maybe the chorus. And then you're on cymbals, maybe some rims, <laughs> and then stop doing anything. And they're like, oh, man. Uh, but I mean, they have really good ideas. They understand, though, why. Because the goal is it doesn't help focus on Jesus at that moment in time. The, the real point is that worship is a little more background at that point. So they can focus on Jesus, focus on the ministry that's happening. Another question, question four. Uh, how am I delivering the product, God's redemptive work? Um, you know, should we do this new, new song? It's like, well, the lyrics are ambiguous. You know, it's a great groove, it's a great song, but these lyrics really don't help bring the redemptive work to the forefront. It's really emotionally, it doesn't really help a whole lot. And so maybe I wouldn't go with something, I don't have a song in my mind right now, by the way, but, um, or even, you know, where I'm putting stuff in the set. Does this allow me to bring God's redemptive work? You know, there is, there is certainly a time for emotionally driven songs or uh, lustly, lustly deep lyrics, but maybe not in the front set. You know, maybe not song one. If I'm trying to deliver the product first, I don't want the emotional stuff because I'm really then opening up for, you know, more of a heretical or vain worship. I want to deliver the product. I want to deliver God's redemptive work up front. Um, so, and then the fifth one is how will this facilitate the work of the Holy Spirit? Kind of back into the drumming scenario of post-message. Hey, we want to facilitate the Holy Spirit moving right now. I know we're on stage and it's the worship time, quote unquote. But this is the time for God's people to minister to. So how do we need to function properly within this? Uh -huh. uh, and the last thing, start with a plan. I know sometimes people don't like plans, or we like to go willy-nilly. I love plans. I think God is a God of structure. He's not a God of chaos. He's a God of order. That doesn't mean he's not a God of spontaneity and relationship, though. Those are not exclusive. Uh, but I think there's almost kind of a hierarchical uh, authoritative structure to it. Let's start with a plan, and then we can deviate. You can't deviate from no plan. Uh, so I do think it's important. I work really hard to set out to create a worship set. And then within it, though, I'm going to create pockets for movement, pockets for spontaneity. Be like, okay, look, we have a 20 set on the back end, and this song we've allotted six minutes for. 
and it only takes four. So we literally can do anything we want here, and this is what we're going to do, but we have room for vamping longer, we have room for a longer solo, we have room for, for praying, we have room for scripture, we have room. And so I plan in the room for the Holy Spirit to move within, or to, we can go off script here. Um, uh, also then here I went with conversational points with the pastoral staff, because if you're going to plan, you really need to be on the same page with the head pastors. I love wearing the head pastors here. We have a weekly meeting uh, where we talk about the previous uh, service, so to speak, the, the worship set, but also other elements. You know, although we're worship leaders and we're creating sets, the whole thing is what's going on. The whole thing is a, a celebration of what Christ has done. And so it's the sermon, it's confession, it's prayer, it's music. We're not on an island. We're going to do our own thing. I, don't, I would never want to be the pastor does his thing and then I do my thing. We're all doing God's thing, and so we need to be on the same page. And so I love that we have weekly meetings on it. Uh, I've never not been in a group where we're doing some sort of communication between the directors and those. So some, some points with a conversation, conversation points with the pastoral staff or the leading staff, the creative staff. What is the theme for a series? Songs, you know, have themes. It's funny, the hymnals are great. They actually, each song has like four words describing what kind of theme it would work with. It's actually really brilliant. We don't have anything like that. Uh, you know, oh, I need something on confession, or I need something on giving, or, or grace. And you could literally find it in the index in the back of the hymnal. It's hilarious. It's hilarious in a good way. And you could find it. Oh, these five songs talk about grace conceptually, you know. Honestly, you have to do that kind of on your own today. We don't have that kind of nice tool. Or maybe there is one, and you can tell me about it. You know, is there a scripture for the week? I would love to get a thesis statement on the sermon. Like, what is your point? Like, if I didn't know anything else, what's your point? We have three services. I like, um, my wife comes to 11 because it makes the most sense for our, our family. And so I literally am going through two services, the six o'clock on Saturday and the nine o'clock, without having heard the sermon. And I am exactly want to sit in the sermon on six o'clock either. This sounds crazy I'm saying it. I don't want to do that because I want to do it with my wife. I want to have the family time where we both experience it for the first time together in unity as a unit. Uh, I don't want it to be just retread, you know? And I'm really busy. I, I need to use my time in other areas or prep something at uh, 6 o'clock after the service. And so, uh, But if I know what the thesis statement is, where he's going, the key passage, I know I definitely go over the passage a lot. I, I read through it. What is he saying? What are the main points in here? Uh, you know, based off the premise, if the Holy Spirit's moving in his life and the Holy Spirit's moving in my life, major conclusion he's going to pull out, I should be pulling out. And we should be together on that. And then if you can give me a thesis, that's really great. And the other great thing I want to know, this actually changes everything, is where are you ending, though? Are you taking this message up? Are you taking it down? Are you taking a medium? Are we doing ultra call? I mean, where are you landing? Because my whole post set is really dependent on that, especially the first song coming in the message. Because if you're taking it up and I have, you know, somber, nice music, we're, I mean, we're totally not on the same page. And so I want a thesis statement, I need to know the scripture verse, and then I need to know where you're landing. And where do you want me to land? You know, that's a good question. Where do you want me to take it at the end of this? What's, the, what's most helpful there? So, um, <laughs> I have a really um, weird statement for you that I think is helpful to understand where our kind of role is as a worship leader. And I went with a worship leader is like a good woman. <laughs> Which is terrible because I'm a man saying what women are like. But don't be offended by this, please. Um, it's similar to the men, in theory, in the marriage are supposed to be leading. No better, but equal, but have a role of leading. Same thing in the church. The pastors are the ones that are going to answer to God with the trajectory and what the church does. That's not my bag. I don't have to worry about that. What I need to do is I'm going to be asked for how do I support that and facilitate that. Uh, and so I love this. Um, you know, really good, um, maybe not a good woman, good wife. The idea is not telling, but using well-crafted questions to spur on leadership, direction, conciseness, without ripping away leadership. And so I think that I have strong, strong, strong opinions, really strong opinions. Uh, I have an opinion on what we should be doing with worship. I have an opinion on where the church should be going, how we should be doing it. And all of those, I don't think necessarily wrong. I don't need to go hide them. You know, I think God gave them to me. Some are legitimate, some are not. And I'm not doing any service to my pastoral staff if I'm holding on to them. Likewise, I'm not doing them any service, so I'm just bashing them over the head with it. I'm like, you should be doing So my goal is to ask really good questions. How are we, like what direction are we taking this sermon series? 
what are what is your real goal when you're making this statement like or you're ending here what are you actually trying to accomplish that's kind of pushing conciseness you know may, maybe they have thought of it maybe they're great at it maybe they're not um, but those are good questions of um, that you get some your input in there but you're not taking away the leadership mantle which I think is really important to be submitted to that so does that make sense how I'm saying that one okay is it offensive? I don't know. No. Okay. That's true. Is that offensive? <laughs> I think it's really hard though. I'm going to be honest. It is really hard. Um, you know, it's really hard to have strong opinions and know, God, give them to you. And there's nothing wrong. You're like, these are right opinions. But it's really hard to get that into, into leadership. And so I think there's a craft of that alone. Um, questions like, can we change the worship set to accomplish this? That's a great question. I actually, we do actually a lot of times for up front and two. Uh, and we continue to have conversations of, how do we best facilitate worship? Instead of me saying, I think we should do this, that question actually is a better question and will keep us on the same page. Because I trust our leadership. I love them. They have the best intentions for our people. And they, they're, they're thinking about it actually more than I am. They're vocationally doing it. I'm only bivocationally doing it. And so a good question is, how are we actually trying to accomplish this? How does the worship set accomplish? How do you see what we're doing accomplishing this? Where do you see our role in it? So, all right. So that's enough for that. Uh, so on to the year view. So that was the prelude. I said think camera on that. That sounds funny. Why did he say think camera? I tried to think of some kind of object that would communicate just in a simple object what I, I'm looking for in that. The camera, when I think of it, you, you can't get everything with a camera. You have to focus on one thing. You look at one thing and then you focus it. And that was the idea of the product. Focusing on Christ and the redemptive work on the cross and help the congregation see it and then focus in on it and that's where we're looking.